Okay, this is my TNA Impact Wrestling review for March 1st, 2012. This was a pretty good impact. I like this show. Uh, it definitely had its goofy moments, but uh, overall it was a good show, and I enjoyed this week's impact. I'm just going to go ahead and get right to the show. Um, they started off with a recap of the Sting angle from last week with him putting the makeup back on and then uh, the show Kurt Angle backstage and he says he's going to tell everyone in the Impact Zone and at home why he hates Jeff Hardy and why he interfered in his match. Um, Kurt Angle comes out, says he has a lot of reasons why he attacked Jeff Hardy. He's got these cue cards with all this stuff written on him and he says he's going to tell everybody why he hates him and why the fans love him. He says Hardy has lots of hair and he doesn't. But colored hair doesn't make you a champion. He says it's embarrassing that he wears makeup and has socks on his arms. The fans walk away from Kurt Angle to go see Jeff Hardy. Girls love Jeff Hardy, but Kurt Angle chooses to be a one-woman man. The number one reason he hates him is because Kurt has a hundred action figures, hundred posters, hundred t-shirts, but at night when he goes to tuck his kid into bed, his kid's got Jeff Hardy posters. He's stepping on Jeff Hardy action figures, and his kid's wearing makeup, socks on his arms, and has purple hair. And he's wearing a Jeff Hardy shirt. So he says he's got a solution to this problem, and he calls out Jeff Hardy. Jeff comes out. Kurt says that these are the reasons you're not a champion. And his solution is Kurt Angle versus Jeff Hardy at Victory Road. And Kurt will destroy him, he says. Uh, Hardy immediately attacks Kurt Angle. It gets broken up by officials and Al Snow. Um, Hardy grabs a microphone and accepts the challenge. So we have Kurt Angle versus Jeff Hardy at Victory Road. Um, then we have Bobby Roode backstage. He says what Sting did was a disgrace and bad for business. Sting booked himself into the main event even though there are other guys backstage who are more deserving. He says it's not his fault that Sting is washed up and Austin Aries comes up. And he says he's tired of Sting too. And he's had enough. And then they decide to go off and talk. So then we have a gauntlet match with Kazarian and Christopher Daniels versus AJ Styles. Um, AJ says he doesn't know why Kaz keeps drinking his Kool-Aid. But when he beats them both, he wants to know what exactly Christopher Daniels has over Kazarian's head. Daniels says we don't have to do anything. And then Kazarian takes the microphone and says okay. So at this point I'm thinking... Well, if you agree to tell him, then what the fuck are you listening to Christopher Daniels for? Just tell everybody now and be done with this. But they have a match, and it's Christopher Daniels versus AJ first, and this was a pretty good match. Um, eventually, Kazarian distracts AJ, and Daniels attacks him from behind. Uh, at a few parts, Kazarian was kind of cheering Daniels on, so I'm starting to think, like, what's going on here exactly? Um... Then all of a sudden Kazarian runs in and hits the fade to black on AJ Styles disqualifying Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels looks really confused like he didn't know what was happening. And then Kazarian pins AJ and gets the win. So now I'm thinking maybe Kazarian, who at first was acting like he didn't want to listen to Christopher Daniels, he didn't want to attack AJ, he didn't want to follow his orders, but now it looks like he wants to follow his orders and he's been brainwashed or something. I don't know. This is ridiculous. But hopefully Victory Road, we can end this thing and find out what exactly it is because now it's just not even making sense anymore. Um, then we have Madison Rain backstage. She's hanging up pictures of Gail Kim. Gail says that she was harsh last week and overreacted. And she got Madison a spa day for tomorrow. And she got her another present for tonight, which is a match against ODB. Madison's like, oh, I don't want that. And she looks upset. So we have Madison Rain with Gil Kim versus ODB and it, with Eric Young. Uh, Taz starts to go off on how bad Eric Young smells. Taz was the shits on commentary tonight. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. Tanae wasn't very good either with some of the stuff he says later on in the show. But um, I'll get to that in a second. Um... ODB goes for a Bronco Buster at one point, and Madison Rain <laughs> kicks her in the vagina. ODB goes for her BAM move. Gail acts like she's coming in to hit her with the title. And 
she acts like she's stuck on the apron and can't get in to help Madison. So ODB hits the bam move and gets the win. Um, I don't see why Matt Gail Kim would want ODB to win over Madison because if Madison's the number one contender, and Madison doesn't want to wrestle ODB, and all these girls are afraid of ODB, then having ODB beat Madison, wouldn't that make ODB, if not the number one contender, closer to being the number one contender, and then Gail would have to wrestle ODB? So I didn't think that made much sense, but I'm probably putting more thought into this than TNA is. Uh, they recap Bully Ray and Brendan Jacobs from last week. Then we have backstage Bully Ray. He's talking to some poor girl, and he says she looks worse every time he sees her. And this was hilarious. He's he's telling her all his problems. He says he blames Storm for bringing in Brandon Jacobs uh, over the railing and then putting him in that match or having him at ringside during the match when he got choke slammed. Uh, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries come up. And Bobby Roode and Bully Ray start arguing, and Aries calms him down and says, Storm isn't the problem, Sting is the problem. Uh, Bobby Roode says that all their problems are with Sting, and there's room for one more. He tells Bully to call him, and then as he's walking away, Austin Aries says, or call me. And this was good stuff. This is a good little alliance group here, stable. Uh, then we have Velvet Sky. Um, she's saying she paid her dues and keeps getting screwed over. Uh, she cuts a good promo here. And then we have Sarita and Angelina come up, and they start pushing her. And then Velvet Sky starts fighting with them. Um, this was a bad brawl. Uh, it was a good promo at first, but it turned into a, a shitty brawl. Um, just It looked horrible. Eventually, Mickey James comes up to check on Velvet Sky. And she's wearing her basketball outfit from the merchandise madness sale that TNA is having. They were showing these uh, commercials for this merchandise madness sale, and all the girls are dressed up in basketball outfits. And so when Mickey comes to check on Velvet, she's wearing this basketball outfit. Then we have Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff talking to Gunner, or I'm sorry, Garrett. Um, Gunner's with him though, and Flair tells Garrett that he told him not to come back. And Hogan's out of the country. Flair tells him he will give him one more chance, and he better not be there next week in his business. Garrett says, I'm, I'm not my father, and I appreciate the heads up. And he walks away, and then Flair says, what the hell did he just say to me? And Gunner says, cocky bastard. This was hilarious. Um, then we have Bobby Roode, Austin Aries, and Bully Ray come out. Um... Like I said, this is a good stable. Rude says that the main reason people are watching is because of him, and Sting is nothing but an authority figure. He's not an active wrestler. He crossed the line putting his hands on the champ, and he shouldn't have booked himself into the main event. Tonight he's going to do something he should have already done and says there won't be a match at Victory Road. He's done. Bully Ray takes the mic and says, Shoot the calves. They're growing by leaps and bounds every day. Um, Bully Ray was great here. He says, uh, at first I thought it was Storm's fault, but now I realize it was Sting's fault that Brandon Jacobs was allowed at the impact zone and was allowed to get over the railing and was allowed to come to the match and stand at ringside, which caused the most embarrassing moment of my career, which he then shows a replay of. Um, Bully says he's done. Austin Aries says that he's been watching... And Sting is another guy who doesn't know when to step out of the spotlight. He's jealous of the younger guys. He's jealous that Rude's a better champ than he ever was, that Austin Aries can do things he could only dream of doing in this ring. Uh, Aries says that in his career, two things have followed him, pissed off people in championships. He's beat everyone and still hasn't been in the main event, so he's done. So they all sit in the ring, the lights go out, and all of a sudden Sting appears in the ring with them. <laughs> Um, he's not wearing his Joker makeup. He says that when he told everyone he was done, it was just mind games, and he was trying to stir things up. If that's what they're doing, it's okay, but if they're really done, then we need to talk, he says. Um, he asks them all if they're really done. They say yes. Um, then he says, well, that sucks, Bobby Roode, because I was going to kick your ass at Victory Road. And if you're done, then you can't be the champion anymore. You're going to lose your title. And then he tells Bully that if you're done, you're not going to get a paycheck. You're not going to have jobs. If you don't have jobs, you're not going to get a paycheck. 
Then he tells Austin Aries that he hasn't put him in any main events, but that changes tonight. He books Bobby Roode, Bully Ray, and Austin Aries versus Magnus Joe and James Storm. The lights go out again and Sting disappears. <coughs> Excuse me. We have another Sorensen video. Uh, it's him and his mom talking. She says something about getting him back into the ring. I thought it might be a little bit early to be saying things like that, especially since this was shot like the day after the accident. But uh, it's whatever. Then we have Zima Ion saying he doesn't feel any remorse for what he did. He feels great being the number one contender, and he breaks necks, and he tells the cameraman he'll break your his neck right now. Um, I thought it was good. I think Zima Ion's a great heel, and with this Jesse Sorensen thing, as, it's as unfortunate as it is, and it's a horrible situation. When Jesse does eventually come back, I hope he doesn't push himself and try and come back sooner, but when he does come back, it's going to give him a huge baby face um, momentum and Zima has huge heel heat from this so hopefully he can recover and come back better than ever and they can do something with these guys and it'll be huge um, then we have Shannon Moore versus Zima Ion uh, Zima keeps pulling on Shannon's mohawk uh, Zima eventually wins clean and this was an okay match he kinda uses the hairspray on his hair after the match um, I think Zima's a great heel. Uh, we have Sarita and Angelina Love versus Velvet Sky and Mickey James. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on. Is Winter released because Angelina Love was with Winter uh, and now she's with Sarita. Sarita was in Mexican America. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Is Mexican America no more? I guess I guess it's gone because it was Sarita and Rosita with Mexican America, but now it's just Sarita and Angelina. So I guess winter's out of here, and so is Mexican America, but whatever. Um, Velvet runs in and starts attacking Angelina. She doesn't do the let the pigeons loose thing. She's pissed off, so she goes right for her. Um, then it just got weird. Mike Tanay starts talking about how TMZ and Twitter and how Madonna and the Girls Gone Wild guy are at each other's throats, and he would love to see them wrestle on TNA. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, they start to call the match, and then he brings it up again, and then he also says, and that reminds me, also on TMZ, Lindsay Lohan is hosting Saturday Night Live this week. Who the fuck cares? What the fuck are you talking about, man? What does this have to do with TNA or wrestling in general? I don't care about Saturday Night Live. I don't care about TMZ. Why are they doing this? Do they have some kind of deal with TMZ or some shit? I don't know. This was really strange, and it had no place being here on this show. Um, eventually, Velvet wins with a double underhook face buster on Angelina Love. It was an okay match. Um, James Storms backstage with Magnus and Joe. Storm says that Lockdown is in his backyard, and tonight he's going to give Rude a taste of what's going to happen at Lockdown. Magnus cuts a good promo on how it's a strange combination to have a cowboy, a Brit, and a Samoan together, but people said him and Joe wouldn't work, and now they're the best team in the world. So, then we have Tanay <clears throat> saying that TNA got a letter from the family of Abyss <laughs> looking for him. <laughs> this shit. So Mike Tanay says, we got a letter at TNA from Abyss's family. They want to know his whereabouts. <laughs> they want to know where the fuck Abyss is. <laughs> So they show a recap of Abyss versus Bully Ray at Genesis. And it was a hardcore, I think it was a Monsters Ball match. And then at the end, the cameramen are talking to Bully. They say, you know where Abyss is? He says, I don't know where he is. Pretty sure Abyss is in Ring Kaking, which is TNA's promotion over in India. It's where Jeff Jarrett is, and he's working over there. They got Chris Masters. They got Chavo Guerrero. They got a lot of people over here at this India promotion, and, and they've been exchanging talent. Scott Steiner's over there. Uh, Matt Morgan's been going over there. So I'm pretty sure that's where Abyss is, but maybe they're going to try and make some kind of angle out of this and bring him back. Um, so we have the main event, which is Bobby Roode, Bully Ray, Austin Aries, and versus James Storm, Joe, and Magnus. Um... This was a great match. This was an awesome main event. Uh, eventually, Austin Aries goes for a drop kick, but it gets reversed, and Bully Ray takes the missile drop kick off the top rope. Um, 
Magnus and Joe hit the snapmare into the elbow drop on Ares, but uh, Bobby Roode comes in, hits a spine buster on Magnus. Bully Ray hits the um, grabs Samoa Joe's head and drops him over the top rope. Uh, Storm comes in, hits a code breaker in the last call on Roode, and he gets the win. Um, then Storm is celebrating with the beer, and they're playing his music. And Bully Ray comes in with a chair and he starts hitting uh, Magnus. And Storm just jumps down and gets a chair thrown in his face. He catches it and Bully Ray kicks the chair and knocks him out. Storm should have known when his music stopped playing that something was going on. There were shenanigans because he just, the music stopped and he's like, oh, whatever. He's on the top rope. Like, that never happens. And then when Bully Ray is laying out both guys with a chair, Samoa Joe is still out. Now keep in mind, all he took was one of those moves, the guillotine, or I think, when they just grab your head and jo jump off the rope. Happens all the time in matches. For some reason, this lays Samoa Joe out for like five minutes. He doesn't even take a chair shot, he's still out. So I thought that was kind of ridiculous. Uh, Bully Ray stands over James Storm and he says that you're not going to make it to Lockdown Cowboy, and he's the number one contender, and he's going to take the belt from his good friend Bobby Roode. And that was it. It was a pretty good main event, though, and it was a pretty good Impact show um, overall. So I did like this week's Impact. I had a lot of funny stuff happen, but um, that's it. That's my review of Impact for this week. I'll be back tomorrow doing SmackDown, so I hope you guys like the review. Subscribe to my channel, rate the videos, leave some comments, and thanks for watching. Bye.